I'm gonna make a clappy sound. Welcome to the first uh, Brave Pod. We have here our lovely initiator, Francisca Gonder, who uh, has uh, yeah a, a big history with uh, courage and bravery and and uh, showing up when it matters. Um, we're making a little series of uh, podcasts to introduce you to the Brave Space. And I'm Amor. I am a co-initiator, facilitator, and I have my fair share about bravery to share with you. But not today, because today is about Fran. And uh, I was teasing Fran as we were preparing for the pod, asking her uh, when she decided uh, to not be a coward anymore. Let me reframe that question. When did you need bravery most in your life? Ah, what a beautiful question. Um, when did I need bravery most in my life? I think in the moments when I was either confronted with um, a lot of emotions from others or had to find myself because of happenings in relationship with others. Um, that was very complicated. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, when I'll be really raw and honest right here, right from the get go. Um, I think when my parents got divorced, I was like 12, I think. Um, that was um, a very severe experience in my life. Um, I'm a total family person. Um, and when I realized that this unit that I thought was kind of like keeping it all together for me, especially in a time when you're like a teenager, you know, there's a lot of like things going on for you anyway. Um, I, I was definitely thrown into a state where I had to show a lot of bravery to myself retrospectively. I didn't, I don't think I knew that back then, of course, I think I was a little bit too young, but um, showing up for myself in a way of like, preserving my um, my sense of belonging and safety um, was a big deal um, back then and I and I, I did that by basically just becoming very 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 independent very early so I, I started working in my first jobs when I was like 14 um, basically yeah earning everything all the money that I needed for myself I I uh, went on a lot of like travels by myself. I left um, home right after high school to like live in the United States. Um, I studied in the Netherlands, but it was all, I had traveled the world for basically all my twenties, but it was really just a way for me to like get to know myself because I knew that was the bravest thing that I could do. Cause I was really afraid of getting too attached to other people again, I think. And in that moment, it was the bravest thing I could do for myself. There's a lot of other brave moments. Um, um, it also related to that, like when I was, you know, starting to commit to my now husband, very brave moment in my life. Um, for that reason, commitment it, it was always a very hard thing for me. And I think the bravest thing I've ever realized for myself is that commitment is liberation for me. Like when I started to commit I started to liberate myself from my fears and from the things I thought that would, you know, shatter me to the ground again. Um, and in a way I had to like embody co commitment. I had to like get married and have children and, you know, build a really beautiful family, which I do have now um, in order to write a new narrative around brave commitment. That's beautiful. And there's a lot there. I think uh, uh, the arc that you described was a person who was uh, at a young age confronted with uh, the yeah breaking apart of a, the family unit. Yeah. And uh, within uh, 20, yeah, almost 20 years, you uh, were able to face that fear head on by, by not walking away from it, but actually... Uh, manifesting uh, a new and improved version of it in your own family. Yeah. And I, I, I can imagine that um, along the way, you were probably uh, 
I remind reminded of those scars. Yeah, a lot. I think my ex-boyfriends would probably agree to that too. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I don't think I was always the easiest girlfriend to have. Um, and I'm not. I'm not. I was always, I think, a committed girlfriend. But I, I, I was never, never as committed as I think I, I could have been. Or I, I, I was never as present as I could have been. I was never as sort of like dedicated to the growth of the relationship because of um, certain fears that I wasn't aware of back then. Um, or yeah, and I think it wasn't. Nothing was out of mal intention or you know bad intention but simply because yeah i it, I'll, I'll start differently i think for for everybody in his in their life has a certain gate of growth right um and it's something that i talk to my little sister about a lot um um my husband for instance his gate of growth has always been professional endeavors like he grows grows very significantly by exposing him to like those kind of challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's something that's really meaningful to him. Um, family too, but like his gate of growth is differently. My gate of growth, the, the, the one most significant in my life has always been romantic relationships. Um, and they have always been vulnerable. They've always been sort of like, like, you know, tricky for me in the way where it's like, I had to face a lot of like demons um, throughout the years. And then one day you meet that person where you think you could, you know, you could stay with. Um, and, but also because they're the ones saying, I, I see you for all that you've done over the past few years. And I see you for all the growth that you have committed to. Um, and I'm respecting you for all the little things that you still come with. And I do come with the same stuff. Like I have different stuff, but I, I come with the same things, right? And I think today I'm lucky that I have found that person. Um, but back in the days, I think I probably, yeah, uh, left a few souls um, on the side, including mine, uh, more, than, more often than once. That's beautiful, the way you phrase that, that you also left your own soul, soul to the side. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to ask, but you almost answered it already. Is like, what is the biggest change or difference uh, within you that was always uh, experiencing that growth in romantic relationships? And what, what was the shift that you went through to uh, truly commit? Mm, it was my dad's death, I think. Wow. Well, how's that related? Yeah, I think my when my dad passed away, um, it was the second time that um, part of my family broke in many ways. And um, my dad and I had uh, an ambiguous relationship. Like we, we had a good relationship and we also had a, a very stubborn relationship. Um, and I respect my father for a lot of things. And I also think there's a lot of things that I am now doing differently with my children. Um, and I think that's a, that's a very normal way of looking at personal growth. Like we look at the things that we've learned in our childhood and then we're like, is that actually who I want to be? Um, is it actually how I want to continue? And I think there's a lot of like, there's a lot of things around like intergenerational um, uh, intergenerational narrative um, and, intergener and potentially also intergenerational trauma that can be discovered there. Um, but I think when my dad passed away, what I realized is that nothing that I have done until then, um, especially professionally, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been sort of like the professional go-getter and like, you know, always it always had to sort of like up and right like it's always it was as it was always always about ambition and more and you know living life to the fullest and traveling as much as you can and you know finding myself and all that kind of stuff and what I've been totally avoiding is sort of like the like the beauty 
of finding all of that in stillness with others, mm -hmm. right? And um, yeah, and I think that stillness with others is the relationship that I am in now and that I am not able to experience with my dad anymore, even though I would have loved that, that stillness. And I miss the stillness that I didn't have with him. Thanks for sharing that. And it is maybe also the most scary thing to uh, allow yourself to uh, enjoy uh, with the experiences of it getting taken away or uh, yeah. still yeah. in life. I think uh, uh, when you're talking about uh, truly loving somebody, you're also signing up for the heartbreak when whenever however yeah, uh, yeah. life yeah. shows you that time passes yeah 100% uh, 100% and uh just to catch up on uh, you and your uh career uh, mm -hmm. professionally always uh on the rise the the, the go getter uh that's I, how we met huh sorry that's how we met i think in a sandbox, actually, yeah, that's true. Kairos, I think it was Kairos, but yeah, yeah. And uh, you've you've done a lot as an entrepreneur, as a executive, as a founder, and um, now you're doing something completely different. Uh, yeah. What was the part that bravery played in? Yeah, taking off the jacket and mm. putting on a I new a jacket. It's such a huge symbol in my life. How did you know that? Um, uh, yeah, my when I was when I was eight, 19, my mom gave me a symbol for life that you're wearing a leather jacket um, for his, like that same leather jacket as long as you can, and you put all those like buttons on it, and you know the and it's going to be a very colorful leather jacket until you have to change into a new one because it doesn't fit anymore. And that's when you know, like, life is moving into a different direction. And back then, back then, that was such a meaningful encounter with my mom that I uh, still, I still talk to her about it. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for that a moment of serendipity right now. Um, uh, yeah, I'm doing something completely different. I'm doing unscalable, one-on-one, -on -one, um, deep and emotional work. Very different to my scale as fast as you can, um, fast exit uh, strategy and uh, collecting as much VC money as possible like before. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I... Um, I ran, a, I ran an organization for about six years um, in parts also with my uh, beautiful human co-founder, Kyle Henry, um, mm. who's now the godfather of my children. So he made it into our life, uh, this, you know. Um, but um, it, it called Venturesome and we provided interim executive services for um, startups. And um, most of our clients were also VCs because we would work with them um, uh, to, to provide those services for their startups. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I held a lot of positions as interim CEOs, interim CM CMO, VP of people, um, those kind of like, you know, fancy title names. Um, but what I realized over the years is that the bravest thing, in fact, um, that I was able to provide for some of my clients was, uh, leadership support. Um, and that meant how do they build, how do they build organizations where people feel psychological safety, where people feel a sense of belonging, um, where people feel you know, um, a sense of productivity and at the same time where they can bring their whole self to work. And it has taken me many roles and many encounters um, to, until, to realize that the one thing 
that a lot of founders do not have because they hadn't had to focus on it before is that sort of like uh, human interaction bravery, right? Um, it's like, how do I, how do I make sure I keep the strategy, the organizational strategy and our growth goals in mind while making sure my people feel amazing about the place that they're, mm-hmm. that they work at. And that's how I got into coaching. Uh, I had my own coach uh, for a pretty long time. And because of leadership challenges myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my coach said, I think you would be a really great coach. And I had a lot of imposter, a huge imposter syndrome around that. I was like, I can't become a coach. I'm way too young. I have, don't have enough experiences. I can't charge that much money. Like, you know, all, everything that like every coach sort of like goes through at some point. Um, and yeah, about four years ago, I decided to become a coach. And this year was the year last year, it's 2021 now, uh, last year was the year where I decided I'm going to do it full time. So it took me four and a half, about four and a half years to go full time after doing a lot of certifications and a lot of like, you know, ad hoc work as a coach, not actively pursuing it, but, you know, adding it as part of my services in my organization. So, um, yeah, it was brave, financially brave. Uh, I have three kids. Um, so it's a, it was definitely something that I had to think about mm-hmm. and how I want to make that work. Um, but as the, as COVID rolled out, uh, rolled out, <laughs> invaded, um, I, uh, I also realized how many people were looking for a place of safety, sanity, um, yeah, what's next? A lot of people realized a lot of things about their lives last year. Um, a lot of things, a lot of perspectives on life changed, a lot of desires changed. Um, there was There's a radical honesty element to what happened in the pandemic. Like it kind of like showed us a lot about what we, what's, what we really need. And I guess that's a sweet spot of mine. Like I, I had to ask myself that question quite a quite a lot in my life already so um so yeah I went full-time and I think it's the best thing that I've ever done in my life so you started Brave Space that's happening I know I started Brave Space with you <laughs> yeah all jokes aside uh why do you need Brave Space because I want more raw, intimate, real conversations with people. Um, that's a, that's a selfish answer. Um, that's good. you know, I'm, I'm ba- we're basically building something that we want ourselves, right? That's, I think that's the best starting point. Um, also because we're all humans and our desires are more similar than they're not. Um, that's my, that's my honest belief, but um, I want Brave Space because I've seen I've seen so many people trying to sort of like break into the their, the next chapter of their lives or like trying to do really brave things, small and big. And the the reason why they they are or the, why they're not doing it is because of the people in their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, the people that stand in their corner, the people that cheer them on, the people that tell them, yes, you can, the people that um, give them space to grow. Um, I think that's also so huge. Um, Like that, uh, I want to give you an example of that. Like I had um, had a few meaningful coaching interactions over the past few weeks and with my partners, which I call clients, my partners. And, um, and after one occasion, I called a friend of mine who uh, also lives in Amsterdam. And um, because I knew he, he experienced something similar and I knew I could call him. We hadn't talked for a few weeks. You know, we were both really busy and all I did was just pick up the phone and call him. Thank you, Mark. Um, And, um, and he just picked up the phone and said, I'm here to center with you. What do you need? 
And in that moment, in that moment, I was reminded just of how important um, it is to. There's a lot of kids' noise in the background. Lockdown. Um, um, I was reminded just like of how powerful it is to know that you have people in your corner um, that you can call even when you, you know, when there's no scheduled meeting and there's, there's nothing like that, right? It's, it's so powerful. And so brave space for me is basically that creating brave space, like a brave corner, like a corner for each other as we're going through the biggest decisions in our life. Um, I could probably talk a whole lot more about that, but I think I'll leave it for now and see what other question you have. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I almost have no more questions. Is there anything I should have asked that I didn't? Oh, I love that question. Um, no, but I guess more of like, like if you would have asked me, um, you know, um, what is something that you would want to share with those listening to us today, listening to our little fireside chat here, my candle, uh, candle side chat. Right. Um, what would I, what would I say is that the bravest, I guess the bravest thing that we can do, especially in a time of isolation, like mm -hmm. now is to open ourselves up to each other. Um, and to, um, to commit, uh, to one another, um, to checking, to checking in with one another, to, um, um, making space for virtual dinners and virtual hugs and, um, and a brave space, uh, where we can explore the ins and out of nothingness and the ins and outs of everything that, you know, that means everything to us, um, or just holding space and being quiet like my friend did when I called him. Um, and I think that kind of like, I guess, re-emphasizes why Brave Space and what the work that we're about to do is so important to me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks for kicking off the Brave Pod. It's uh, Thank you. the first of many. Thank you for opening up and sharing so much about your life with us. Mm. And uh, we'll catch everybody on the next pod, I guess. Thanks for being in my corner. Always. Pleasure. <laughs>